hear the sound of it? No. If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. Just, just take out the CD. Okay, welcome to a surprise episode of 911 Was an Inside Job. Yes, it's May 30th, or April 30th, excuse me, I'm a month ahead. April 30th, and uh, this was a non-scheduled one. So what we're going to do is talk about, we're going to open up the phone lines almost right away. So the guys will be putting up the CD. We only have one phone line. It's 503-288-4442. And, uh, you know, it, it's uh, under, uh, no, it's the number three there. No, not that. Anyway, uh, we're, we're having a little technical discussion. I'm shooting from inside the control room because uh, we didn't have enough time to put together a, a crew completely. Uh, you want the call-in number sheet there. Yeah, now you'll find it somewhere in there, number five or six. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that's been kind of on a lot of minds. When I first started 9-11, started thinking about it, it was the 9-11 event itself. It was so monumental that we had to just concentrate on that. I mean, it was so much of a difference from what the official story was that you had to concentrate on that and show that it was a lie, show that it was a deceitful, horrible inside job. But everybody keeps asking the question, why was it an inside job? I'm going to go ahead and answer this call right now. Hold on a second. All right, you've reached 9-11 was an inside job. Oh, they hunt. That's weird. Yeah, we're, we're 4 2 you're 4, four 8 no, no problem. That's okay. What it was, I didn't, I didn't put it on yet because uh, the other studio, we just had a mix up with the other studio. Okay, well, we're doing real good. Okay, well, back to what I was saying. The... Uh, uh, the question that everybody asks is, why? Why? Why did they do 9-11? And we've gone 10 years since then, just about, and look at everything we've experienced. And it's beginning to become overwhelmingly obvious that 9-11 was just a small part. It was, the, it was the part that woke us up. You might say that it was the wake-up call. Up till then, everything else being done was being done surreptitiously. I'm going to go ahead and take this call again. Let's we'll see what happens. 9-11. <laughs> they don't have theirs plugged into the right thing. Well, anyway. Yeah, tell them to plug into just two and they won't, I mean, into. I don't know why you get walking in triple update. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, let me finish my sentence before we get going much further. 9-11 uh, was the wake-up call. We see that that was kind of where all the underground stuff started happening more overtly. Um, well, okay, <laughs> we'll try it again. 9-11 was an inside job. Did, yes. H have you got a question? Okay, hold on, I'll put you on. Okay, now, go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, what's your comment or question? 
You might turn down uh, your TV. My question is, why would the government do such a thing? And um... I was just beginning to, to, to mention that. Why would the government do such a thing? And keep in mind that the government, the politics of the government seems to be controlled pretty much by outside forces like the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, and, oh, I'm not framing myself up, sorry. Uh, and so you, when, you, when people say the government, it's not the entire government, it's obviously when something illegal and horrible like this is being done, it's, it can't be called the government because that's totally illegal and the definition of the government doesn't allow it, our constitution doesn't allow it. So it's criminals within the government doing it. That being said, let's take a look at what's going on. Uh, the, the use of Al-Qaeda is the, is the elephant in the room. If you remember back during the Clinton administration, uh, Al-Qaeda was the ex-Mujahideen and they were attacking uh, Yugoslavia. And then Clinton used that as an excuse to go in and bomb the bejesus out of Yugoslavia. Well, what a, what a coincidence, you know, that all of a sudden now, you know, we didn't think much about it. It was Al-Qaeda. We've heard the name before. It was created by, uh, what, Jimmy Carter and, and uh, Brzezinski to fight the Russians during the Russian-Afghan war. And uh, that's where Al-Qaeda became the CIA tool. Now, here's the problem. They're, they're using it everywhere. Every time they want to have some sort of political change that's, you know, every time our American interests are threatened, we need some sort of a terrorist act so we can react and justify it based on that terrorist act. Along comes Al-Qaeda, just in time for 9-11. Now we have a justification to go after two countries that they've been trying to get oil interests in. And uh, the writings of the Brzezinski group talk about global domination of land, sea, air, and space. Now, all these things taken one by one, you know, you could be a, a raving lunatic. But when you stack them up and look at them, they f they're doing what they said they were going to do in their writings. And Al-Qaeda, as I said in one of my last shows, it, now get this, Al-Qaeda is the group of thugs that run around slashing tires for the, tire, for the guy that owns the tire company. Al-Qaeda is the group of thugs that runs around breaking windows for the guy who owns the glass company. Okay, now a little more specifically, Al-Qaeda is the group that runs around giving us justification for our war on terror. They do what we say. Now, here's, the, here's where it gets really, really uh, embarrassing for the government. Up till now, they've been able to blame Al-Qaeda for anything they wanted to. And the idea that Al-Qaeda was a CIA tool, well, you're just a conspiracy nut. Along comes this unrest in the Middle East. Now, if you've been following other sources of information, you know that the, the globalists are supposedly making this push against the Middle East to, you know, create this unrest, bring down these uh, rulers that previously had been so-called friendly to us, but now have stopped towing the line for our corporate interests, and so they have to be replaced. And all of a sudden, Al-Qaeda is the hero. Al-Qaeda is the group that they're calling freedom fighters. Now, they're really embarrassed about calling them freedom fighters and Al-Qaeda at the same time. So, you know, you'll find that some of the more courageous people have actually mentioned the word Al-Qaeda, but for the most part, the only thing they say is they might credit them as being ex mujahideen and, and that's it. Maybe at this point I should run the uh, Alex Jones summary of what Al-Qaeda was again. We did this back on the second. I think we'll, we'll run that again. Are, are you ready to rock? Cut yeah. Okay, this is, this is Alex Jones. Here. We'll go ahead and switch. Okay. Yep. No, that's Wesley Pentagon. Clark. I saw... 
<laughs> this should be it. The system thinks you're stupid. They think you're morons. Yep. And I'm about to cover one of the biggest examples of this in modern history. One of the biggest hoaxes I've ever seen. Anyone who's followed the news for the last few decades, anyone who's researched admitted mainline history knows that Al-Qaeda was CIA created with the backing and support of the Saudi Arabians and the Israelis, as well as Pakistani intelligence. Zbigniew Brzezinski's written two books bragging that in 79, they created the group, had them attack the Russians to get them to then invade Afghanistan so that the Soviets could have their, quote, Vietnam. This is a fact. And the Muslim brigades uh, being controlled by British intelligence goes back to Lawrence of Arabia. And then Hitler took over the Middle East during the first few years of World War II, and they went over to his control. But the hoax is that in the attack against the Serbs to take over Serbia, it was admitted Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden running those operations. And then NATO came in and bombed all of Serbia, and they were forced to give up one-third of their land, basically to Albanian-backed Muslim rebels who were calling themselves al-Qaeda. Then, of course, we have uh, the attacks of 9-11 and the Newsweek headlines about hijackers trained at U.S. bases and the dean of the Defense Language School coming out and saying that they were trained at U.S. bases. And then you have uh, the Times of London as well reporting on the airlift of evil. Months after the Afghanistan war started, U.S. military and British military captured thousands of top al-Qaeda and Taliban commanders, and they would be ordered to release them and fly them out into Pakistan to start the next wave of destabilization. So al-Qaeda on record is a CIA slash British slash Israeli slash uh, Saudi Arabian creation. And they're used all over the world. And, and then you add to that Fox News AP last October 2010 reporting, Amor al-Awlaki, the guy they're now saying is more powerful than Osama bin Laden, trained in the U.S., ran the underwear bombing, uh, the Christmas Day event, ran the Fort Hood shooting, ran the Times Square attack. Uh, the list goes on and on. The shoe bomber. He's always handling these patsies, and it turns out he's secretly hanging out at the Pentagon when he's been on the most wanted list and getting orders and having dinner with the Secretary of the Army and top brass while he's on the news as the head of al-Qaeda. Julie Kurtz joins us from Washington. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, here's what we know. Fox News has learned that Anwar al-Awlaki, the American Muslim cleric, remember him with a worldwide following, dined with military brass at the Pentagon within months of the 9-11 attacks. Now, you add to this hoax now that the openly Western-funded rebels in the east of Libya, and I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy. The point is the West overthrew Egypt and its own puppet to the east of Libya. They've brought down Tunisia. Now it's admitted that British special forces were inside eastern Libya even before the latest rebellion started. So al-Qaeda rebels, and it's admitted that the head of the Libyan rebels was trained by the CIA for decades in Virginia, and he admits that he's working with al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. And so I have to get up here and either say no to this hoax and expose the facts or say I'm a bad American. Because I refuse to say that now Al-Qaeda are freedom fighters and great people. I must refuse uh, to be ignorant and not face the facts of history. But the average gullible person out there who buys into the system will make the decision to say, oh, I guess Al-Qaeda is good. It's like 1984. We've never been at war with East Asia. And the next day, we've always been at war with East Asia. And if you pointed out that, well, you said we were at war with them yesterday, but we're not at war today, and that we were never at war then you get arrested in that system. And that's basically where this country and where the West is going, where the system thinks we're so stupid that Western intelligence is in the east of Libya using radical Muslim al-Qaeda backed out of Saudi Arabia and arms out of Saudi Arabia and Egypt to destabilize Gaddafi. Gaddafi then fights armed force trying to overthrow the government, and our media calls them protesters. Protesters who had tanks and missile launchers and Western weapons. Oh, the poor protesters. 
And the media lied and said he strafed protesters. Turned out that wasn't true. The media lied and said that he'd, he'd run to Venezuela to try to give the rebels support, think they would win. It doesn't mean that there aren't groups in Libya who don't like the goofy uh, dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But Muammar Gaddafi is independent and has tried to build a strong Africa outside of the New World Order. And that's why he must be brought down. He doesn't have an international private central bank running his country. They have their own central bank. And that's why the system is doing this. And they think we have no memory where they're telling us Al-Qaeda is horrible. We've got to take all your liberties in America because they may attack you any minute. The end of the Bill of Rights, freedom is dead. America surrenders and gives up all its rights to Homeland Security to keep us safe because of Al-Qaeda. But then Al-Qaeda, who wants to overthrow the secular Arab leader, Gaddafi, is being brought in to do this. And then we're being told it's humanitarian and we've got to bomb them and attack them to protect them. I mean, think about it, folks. Amr al-Awlaki, the number one guy under bin Laden, secretly hanging out at the Pentagon. The Taliban and al-Qaeda being flown out to safety uh, in the first few months of the Afghan war to start the next crisis. Al-Qaeda being used to attack the Serbs. When the Serbs fight back, oh, it's humanitarian, we've got to bomb them. They just move al-Qaeda around all over the world, call them humanitarian freedom fighters if anybody resists them, and then the UN and NATO comes in and bombs the daylights out of them. But at least with the attack... Uh, in the 90s against Serbia, they went and got congressional authorization for force. At least Bush with his illegal wars, because they were still wars of aggression, but he went and got the Congress to sign off on it, wasn't engaged in that form of brazen treason. Obama, less than 48 hours after the UN gave that resolution to invade, openly, in front of everyone, he ordered the U.S. military to start bombing and firing cruise missiles when... Out in the open, the U.N. had given the order and Obama hadn't even consulted Congress. This is a huge issue that's taking place here, my friends. And I hope you'll research the fact that Al-Qaeda is an arm of the globalist. Al-Qaeda is an arm of the New World Order. Al-Qaeda is a system that the New World Order uses to menace civilizations into giving okay. up their liberties in the name of protection and also to go stir up revolutions and wars to then pose as freedom fighters so the globalists have an excuse to come in and take over countries. This is 21st century imperialism. And Al-Qaeda is the key set piece on this game of chess to bring us into the world government. They are a creation of the private banking cartels who are waging wars against the nation state and all basic liberties that defend the rights of the indigenous populations of the nation states. Al-Qaeda is CIA, is MI6, is Mossad, is Saudi Arabian intelligence. And they've caught British SAS dressed up like Al-Qaeda sh shooting at police in Basra to get Sunnis and Shiites killing each other. I mean, Al-Qaeda is the Swiss army knife of destabilization. They are that magic go-to tool that's used to foment the crisis so the globalists have the excuse to offer the solution. We've broken down one of the biggest modern ongoing hoaxes in history where you're un-American if you don't support the freedom fighters of Al-Qaeda. Well, I don't support them, and I don't agree with what Ronald Reagan said about them, saying that they were founding father material. I don't like Al-Qaeda. Now, you may hate me because I don't love Al-Qaeda. I'm not going to apologize. I'm sorry. I hate Al-Qaeda, and I hate their handlers even more. Okay, well, I hate Al-Qaeda too, but uh, I don't think we hate, Al we hate Alex Jones because he doesn't think he's uh, going to support the uh, new newly created hero al-Qaeda. I was going to say, you know, it's obvious that what we've done is forgiven them for all of the mayhem of 9-11. I mean, we invaded two countries because they supposedly invaded us on 9-11. Well, now it's really clear that we just have a really big heart. We're going to forgive them so, and not only that, we're going to help them. We're going to give them arms. We're going to help them restore freedom to those poor freedom fighters all across the Middle East. Oh, man. Anyway, uh, yeah. It, well, wait a minute. If we've forgiven them, maybe we should stop bombing Afghanistan. Wait, didn't we just put out a, a news article about a drone just killing the highest al-Qaeda official? Why did we do that? Aren't they our friends now? We're helping them. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Wait a minute. What's this disconnect, folks? Oh. 
Well, our phone lines are still open. And yeah, this is the, the 30th of the month. You didn't expect to see us here, but here we are. Hey, thank you. <laughs> there I was. <laughs> anyway, uh, th this view, by the way, is ca that other view was camera five looking into the control room. So it did kind of look funny. And now we're on a camera that we wheeled around to the control room. So, um, but anyway, so if we've actually forgiven Al Qaeda, I mean, if they're good enough guys that we, we should help them, help train them and help fund them in their efforts to bring freedom and democracy to the poor people of the Middle East, then maybe we ought to stop bombing all over the place, you know, in the effort to route them out. What's this disconnect? Okay, n now, now you see the problem. It's right in your face. You can't tell the lie that they were responsible for 9-11 and then turn around and tell the lie that they're freedom fighters in Egypt. Both of those are lies, but you're supposed to believe both of those at the same time. You're supposed to go, meh, and have a cognitive disconnect in your head. Well... I don't hear the phone ringing off the hook. So a couple episodes back, we had a caller call up, and he says, how come you don't ever talk about Israel's involvement? Well, okay, Alex Jones just got done saying in that last clip that al-Qaeda was a, uh, a Mossad, CIA, FBI, you know, he went down the list, uh, British MI6 tool, you know, the tool of, of the Western uh, security agencies. And so that being said, I mean, you know, it's not just strictly Israel that did it. There are people that want us to say just Israel was responsible for the whole thing. Um, but anyway, I rounded up the best clips I could find on that subject. And I'll go ahead and play them and see if that, you know, enlightens anybody or if it's even worth watching. And we'll see what your comments are when we come back. So go ahead and roll it. There we are. It was widely reported that men had been celebrating the attack after recording the first plane strike. They were not Al-Qaeda, but they were detained. I grabbed my binoculars and I could see the towers from my window. And this is where, I, you know, I'm looking. And all of a sudden, down there, I see this van park. And I see three guys on top of the van. And I could see that they were like happy. You know, they, 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 were, they didn't look shocked to me. You know, they didn't look shocked. There was a group of Israelis, uh, some of whom later were revealed as Mossad assets, who were arrested after cheering and high-fiving and videotaping uh, the crash of the airplanes into the World Trade Towers. Several other men were detained after a van full of explosives was stopped outside of Manhattan. Earlier we had heard that an FBI spokesperson said that there was a report on the George Washington Bridge, which is another facility which you folks are responsible for policing, uh, a report that there had been a van uh, stopped there that had explosives. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to the Department of Justice whether I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. On March 6, 2002, a draft report from the DEA said it, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. Despite all of this, all the Israelis were let go without any espionage charges being filed. Fox News anchors Brit Hume and Carl Cameron would do a four-part investigation into these allegations in December of 2001 and yield stunning results. It has been more than 16 years since a civilian working for the Navy was charged with passing secrets to Israel. Jonathan Pollard pled guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage and is serving a life sentence. At first, Israeli leaders claimed Pollard was part of a rogue operation, but later took responsibility for his work. Now Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S. 
Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. Investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins. But when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 911 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Now, when the FBI investigated, uh, it quickly unraveled to be the largest foreign spy ring ever uncovered inside the United States, the largest. Even the Soviet Union had not been spying on the United States as much as Israel has been doing. So they, the FBI started to round up these spies. They started to arrest them very quietly. And they were about halfway through this process of rounding up this spy ring when 9-11 happened. Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. The first part of the investigation focuses on Israelis who say they are art students from the University of Jerusalem and Bazalel Academy. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. Why would Israelis spy in and on the U.S.? A general accounting office investigation referred to Israel as country A and said, quote, according to a U.S. intelligence agency, the government of country A conducts the most aggressive espionage operation against the U.S. of any U.S. ally. The document concludes, quote, Israel possesses the resources and technical capability to achieve its collection objectives. What about this question of advanced knowledge of what was going to happen on 9-11? How clear are investigators that some Israeli agents may have known something? Well, it's very explosive information, obviously, and there's a great deal of evidence that they say they have collected, none of it necessarily conclusive. It's more when they put it all together. A bigger question, they say, is how could they not have known? Almost a direct quote, Brett. It is now apparent that this intelligence ring was inside the U.S., had prior knowledge of 9-11, and had a classified role in 9-11, which officials refused to discuss. It was also able to penetrate U.S. intelligence agencies and secret offices, yet all were released. The men who were detained due to the report they were taping the first plane crash, and then celebrating and joking about it, actually went on television and admitted it was their job to record the attack. And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. How could they have known about the attack? And who sent them to document it? The evidence points to a large intelligence network inside the United States that had teams on the ground, such as the ones recording the attack, and electronic surveillance teams gathering information. Another team who was involved that day detonated explosives on the ground. Yeah, both suspects under K. We have the suspects who drove to the van, the van exploded. Yeah, I just want to make sure you and your guys are all right over there, K. That's all. You know, we have both field trans driven that exploded. One location, K Street between six and seven. How would these teams obtain their information? The investigation on our side basically tracked back to two 
companies. The first one was called Amdocs. This is an Israeli-owned company which does the billing for 90% of the telephone companies inside the United States. Fox News has learned that some American terrorism investigators fear certain suspects in the September 11th attacks may have managed to stay ahead of them by knowing who and when investigators are calling on the telephone. How? by obtaining and analyzing data that's generated every time someone in the U.S. makes a phone call. One sitting in city, please. Here's how the system works. Most directory assistance calls and virtually all call records and billing in the U.S. are done for the phone companies by Amdocs Limited, an Israeli-based private telecommunications company. Amdocs has contracts with the 25 biggest phone companies in America and more worldwide. It is virtually impossible to make a call on normal phones without generating an Amdocs record of it. In recent years, the FBI and other government agencies have investigated Amdocs more than once. Sources tell Fox News that in 1999, the super-secret National Security Agency, headquartered in Northern Maryland, issued what's called a top-secret, sensitive, compartmentalized information report, TSSCI, warning that records of calls in the United States were getting into foreign hands, in Israel in particular. Fox News has learned that the NSA has held numerous classified conferences to warn the FBI and CIA how MDOC's records could be used. So if you know the name of a police officer, or even if you know the name just of an informant, you can follow that network of who is talking to who and basically determine that whole association of names and contacts that uh, uh, represent that unit of, of operation. Fox News has documents of a 1997 drug trafficking case in Los Angeles in which telephone information, the types that Amdocs collects, was used to, quote, completely compromise the communications of the FBI, the Secret Service, the DEA, and the LAPD. Amdocs would not be the only company with ties to the Israeli government. Israel was also gathering information from a separate business, Converse Infosys, who was also listening in. This company, inside the United States, installs and maintains the phone tapping equipment that law enforcement and the government use to eavesdrop on your phone calls. The company is Converse Infosys, a subsidiary of an Israeli-run private telecommunications firm with offices throughout the U.S. It provides wiretapping equipment for law enforcement. Here's how wiretapping works in the U.S. Every time you make a call, it passes through the nation's elaborate network of switchers and routers run by the phone companies. Custom computers and software made by companies like Converse are tied into that network to intercept, record, and store the wiretapped calls and at the same time transmit them to investigators. We know we just had this uh, uh, FISA bill go through that granted uh, immunity to the telecom companies. It was Converse Infosystem that was setting up all these special rooms and all the switching centers where the law enforcement or the government or whoever could simply push a button and listen to your phone call. Gone are the days of the little alligator clips and wires uh, needed to eavesdrop on a phone call. They can sit in a room anywhere in America touch a few buttons and listen to your phone call. But the complaint about this system is that the wiretap computer programs made by Converse have in effect a back door through which wiretaps themselves can be intercepted by unauthorized parties. Adding to the suspicions is the fact that in Israel, Converse works closely with the Israeli government and under special programs gets reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by the Israeli Ministry of Industry and Trade. But investigators within the DEA, INS, and FBI have all told Fox News that to pursue or even suggest Israeli spying through Converse is considered career suicide. And sources say that while various FBI inquiries into Converse have been conducted over the years, they've been halted before the actual equipment has ever been thoroughly tested for leaks. More to the point, agents within the U.S. government have been told point blank that to even suggest Israeli spying or an Israel link to 9-11 is career suicide. It's been described as the third rail of American politics. If you touch it, you die. You never get to come back again. It's all over. It's the black pit where you can never go. But there is a bitter turf war internally at FBI. It is the FBI's office in Quantico, Virginia, that has jurisdiction over awarding contracts and buying intercept equipment. And for years, they've thrown much of the business to Converse. A handful of former U.S. law enforcement officials involved in awarding Converse government contracts over the years now work for the company. 
Numerous sources say some of those individuals were asked to leave government service under what knowledgeable sources call troublesome circumstances that remain under administrative review within the Justice Department. And what troubles investigators most, particularly in New York, in the counterterrorism investigation of the World, Ter World Trade Center attack, is that on a number of cases, suspects that they had sought to wiretap and surveil immediately changed their telecommunications processes. They started acting much differently as soon as those supposedly secret wiretaps went into place. Somehow, suspected terrorists who were being surveilled by these very Israelis were able to change their behavior to elude the FBI. Israel's former Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, would boldly state that we are benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon. The United States has wholeheartedly supported uh, essentially state-sponsored terrorism, both domestically uh, in Israel and uh, as part of Israeli's foreign policy. The American relationship with Israel is the root cause of most of the problems the United States is facing around the world today. Well, I would say this that there's uh, one big elephant in the living room. It's uh, never asked about. People don't like to put it on any video or anything like that. But it is the relationship between the United States of America and the State of Israel. It's the fly in the ointment. It's gotten, into, uh, gotten us into a peck of trouble in the Middle East. I think we're getting near the end. Yeah. Okay, that last speaker was Ray McGovern, the former CIA analyst of 27 years, his responsibility was to create the daily briefings for the president, and uh, he's been quite outspoken. You might check out his website. Um, his group is called Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, and uh, he's made multiple appearances on Democracy Now! and elsewhere, including just recently on Alex Jones. Now, how did you like that Israeli involvement in wiretapping? It, doesn't that just about fit the uh, latest stories about the iPhones and iPods automatically reporting your whereabouts through Google or iTunes? Well, it's just about the same exact thing. The only thing is, you know, I don't know why they bothered, you know, singling out I the iPhone ever since the 1996 uh, Anti-Terrorist Telecommunication Act. Um, it, it, all phones manufactured after 2001 have been doing exactly that. You know, they, the capability of tracking you in real time and the capability of the back door to turn on your phone if you have it off without giving you any indicator that it's on and monitor any sounds that are nearby. That's the ideal bugging device, isn't it? Just Place a telephone on somebody's shelf and call it up. Listen. Uh, well, anyway, the elephant in the room, the third rail, Israel. Now, you know, you notice there's a there's a real sticky problem here. We got NSA worried about security with you know one foreign country, Israel, in this case, taking all of the uh, telephone information from 25 phone companies. And then uh, using that information for, uh, you know, covert purposes. The problem they have is, you know, in order to secure that, they have to kind of make a rule about, you know, you can't uh, export that type of job to another country. Oh, man, that's going to shut down a whole bunch of jobs in India if they tried to make that law. Uh, corporations would go nuts saying, oh, no, you can't do that. You're interfering with our right to make a business, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is that they want us to believe that they're really fighting for our security, that the whole purpose of this giant bureaucracy is, you know, to protect us. And yet any suggestion that would actually come about with a more security, well, that gets ignored because of the profit motive. Um, anyway, we're, I've got a, uh, a, a CG here of, a, of our new schedule They've kind of worked things around a little bit. We're going to put it up here. The uh, replay times have changed a little bit on, you know, it didn't, there we go. Okay, for this show, the replay will be May 4th on Wednesday at 5.30 on Channel 23, and again Friday at 10 a.m. Now, it used to be Fridays at 10 p.m., but they've changed it to 10 a.m., so if you're, or anyway, if you're used to the old schedule, you won't be able to find the show. 
The next live show is May 7th. That's only a week away. We're normally first and third Saturdays, so we're back on that schedule again. And uh, with that, let's open up the phone lines again to the uh, phone number 503-288-4448. Let's see, are we eight? No, we're two. 4442. Yeah, call 4442 if you're trying to call in. There it is. Okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think it, this would be a good time to play the uh, World Trade Center Building Number 7 commercial put out by the surviving family members of 9-11 uh, last month. It's something that needs to be played over and over again until people see it enough times. So go ahead and bring it in. I lost my husband, my son, my uncle, my nephew, September 11, 2001. Most people don't know a third tower fell that day. The government says fire brought it down. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 was primarily due to fires. I, along with 1,400 other architects and engineers, have found the government's conclusion to be physically impossible. 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 We need the truth about what happened that day. Go to rememberbuilding7.org. Why it fell, why it matters, and what you can do. Okay, it's, uh, you know, the situation, we're, we're, we're experiencing uh, outrage overload. Every time you turn around, there's something more outrageous and just... In the, in the old days when I was a kid, it seemed like we had a sense of, of honor and, and law. And if certain agencies were caught doing something or caught even saying that they were going to do something that was even marginally outside of that little narrow path, public opinion really rose up and, and gave forth a lot of criticism. And now we don't get any public criticism whatsoever. It's like... You know, they're, Ace Hayes put it aptly, brain dead meadow muffins. Those are the people that, that we call our citizenry. What, when do you reach the point where you have to speak out? I reached that point a long time ago and I've done it every two weeks and believe me, it makes you feel good inside. You know, some of you folks out there have to walk around and keep it pent up inside of you. And then if you ever do speak out, you probably get put down by some ignoramus that thinks America is God's gift to countries. Well, you know, Bob Bowman just spoke uh, recently. Uh, maybe I'll show that on the next show. Bob Bowman was the lieutenant colonel retired U.S. Air Force, did 105 missions in Vietnam as an Air Force pilot. And uh, then he came out and he got a PhD, several PhDs in nuclear physics and related sciences, and became head of the Star Wars program and became a whistleblower when he found out the Star Wars program wasn't a defensive program as advertised. It was a first strike program. That set him off on a career of, of trying to do things right. He was, he's a hawk. You know, in the old days, I was against hawks. Well, I'm a peacenik, and there's a hawk. We don't combine. Wrong. As long as the person who's the hawk has some honor and will deal with actual facts and actual history and put his cards on the table and then do what he says, I've got nothing but respect. It's the type of so-called hawk that are actually, you know, what, what, what do they call them? Uh, chicken hawks, like Cheney, that never went to war, that that bluster about war and they'll send your children off to war. We don't have a draft right now. It seems like we'd be out of that war real quick if we did have a draft. We actually have a poverty draft though. People don't understand that you know, your so-called volunteer army is an army of desperation, desperately trying to find some way to stay alive and the army offers you an income. You know, just trade your life. We'll give you some minor income. That is, if you bothered to get it in writing, we might give it to you. And even then, we'll try to cheat you out of it, like they're doing with uh, fighting men's insurance policies. Have you even heard about that? Insurance policies that are supposed to pay off to the next of kin are being kept by the government. They say we paid for it. <laughs> we should be the beneficiaries. Man, it, like Lily Tomlin put it right, you know, she was talking about being cynical. And 
you have to be cynical to keep up with what's going on today. But but her, you know, even back in the '60s when she said this, it was already outrage overload back then, and now it's multiplied to where we don't even can't really define the term adequately. But she said it's hard to be cynical enough to keep up, and that's just the fact of the way it is. Well. What do you think about what I've said so far today? Any callers out there feel like calling in? 288-4442. If you don't agree with me, tell me why I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me why we should be supporting our Al-Qaeda fighters in Libya at the same time as fighting them in Afghanistan and blaming them for 9-11 while we're calling them freedom fighters elsewhere. You know, what do you have to say about that? I was going to start out today's show with a picture. Uh, I have a real nice close-up of a cat. Uh, my neighbor's, my friend's kitty cat. I took a good close-up of it. It's a prize-winning picture. I was going to start with that and then switch over to 9-11 was an inside job and say, now that I have your attention, probably if you're watching this show at this point, you're already convinced. But I guess the effort that we need to make is convincing others who might not be convinced and I've tried to keep it on the, the science basis up till now. Um, but now you, it, you see, you do have to branch out and start looking at causes. We, we're pretty much, it's already a done deal. Any, if there's anybody out there that doesn't think that 9-11 itself, the event, was an inside job, they just haven't been paying attention. It's already a done deal. There can be no argument, no serious argument from anybody with any sort of reasonable credentials uh, that 9-11 was controlled demolition there. It's, it's a, by now it's beyond proven. But obviously without the media announcing the fact and telling people what it means, uh, it, it doesn't really matter, does it? So there's a an equ part of the equation missing and that's the news we have to get out the idea that it's already a done deal. We know it was an inside job. Now start putting it together. What did they do that for? Why? What did they get out of it? The Patriot Act, they were able to completely rearrange the legal system the way that they've been trying to do for years, but any sane person listening to it in the past has just dismissed it and called them crazy for trying to usurp our legal system and change it so that they could cheat it and not give people their rights under the Constitution. Well, they've pretty much succeeded in wiping out the Constitution. And now that brings up another thing. If, if you're in a, uh, well, like Texas, I, I have a, on one of my CDs somewhere, I'm not going to ask them to try to find it, but in Texas they've got a brochure that they evidently give out to their law enforcement people. It's how to recognize a terrorist. I'm not kidding. And you read down it and, you know, people who talk about their rights, those might be people to suspect. People who talk about the Constitution. People like me that kind of talk about history as it's happening and then try to hold them accountable to what they say, you know, we might be terrorists. In other words, they've used that word for anything that they don't like, just like they used to use communists and just like they still use, you know, drug dealers. But I don't know. It's just insane. The phone lines are still open. We only have about nine more minutes. You can still have a chance to get a, a call in. Uh, next week on May 7th, we're going to go ahead and have another show like this. But uh, if you have any wants or desires for the direction I should take that show, call up and let me know, or let me know by email, 911waij um, at gmail.com. That's the easiest one to remember. 911 was an inside job at gmail.com. So what else do we have for roll-in since we don't seem to have a very uh, interested phone population? Oh, yeah, okay. Th this will be a good one. People don't understand th that Farrakhan, long ago, Louis Farrakhan nailed the 9-11 thing. And I've been meaning to play parts of this. 
go ahead and start that up. Louis Farrakhan talking about 9-11, and he analyzes it down to where we're all after Muslims. Well, one more step would have been right. We're using that as a tool to get our actual desires, but right now, if you're a Muslim, you're just a victim of circumstance, as they say. Go ahead and play the, the cut. There we go. I want you to pay attention to this. I said on November 25th, 2009, 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear in the American people so that they might subordinate themselves so that the government may get them to do whatever they want us to do. And this was to create this endless war on terror. But the war on terror is a cover and a fraud for the real war, which is a war against Islam. In 2001, we experienced the horrific events of 9-11 but there are many who are saying that the official government version of events is not what really happened. As recently as this month, the Republican candidate in the Texas gubernatorial race, her name is Deborah Medina, publicly said on the Glenn Beck show, quote, I think some very good questions have been raised. In that regard, there's some very good arguments. And I think the American people have not seen all the evidence there. But she quickly backed off of what she said. Now, listen to this. Why is it, these are questions about 9-11. I compiled them, but they're compiled by people who are scientists, who studied this. Why is it that the FBI's most wanted poster of Osama bin Laden mentions other crimes, but not 9-11? Right before 9-11, unusually high levels of quote-unquote put options were placed on the stocks of American and United Airlines and corporate tenants of the World Trade Center. Put options are market bets that give the better a profit if the stock goes down. According to Bloomberg, Business News quote, this would be one of the most extraordinary coincidences in the history of mankind if it was a coincidence. Many people got rich by the bets that they made that the stock in American and United Airlines would go down. How did they know? How was the FBI able to release a list and photos of the hijackers within hours? Why have at least five of the 19 alleged hijackers turned up alive and well living in Saudi Arabia. And if the perpetrators were from Arabia, why are we fighting in Afghanistan and in Iraq? Well, they say because Osama bin Laden was living in Afghanistan. The president of that country, Mullah 
Omar when President Bush said that Osama bin Laden was guilty and he di uh, dictated to Mullah Omar that they should turn over Osama bin Laden to the United States government and its authorities. And Mullah Omar said to President Bush, show me the proof that Osama bin Laden did this and we will turn him over to you. President Bush with his arrogant self said, we're not negotiating with you. Turn him over or else. Now, what is America doing in Afghanistan? Trying to buy off the warlords? Boy, this is, this is a sick people, man. You bomb them and laugh. Now they're kicking you behind. And now you're trying to buy the allegiance of these people? Don't you know with a $25 million price on Osama bin Laden's head, why haven't somebody delivered him? See, to some people, money is not the answer. Listen. How, these are questions, how could these alleged hijackers have known that multiple classified air defense drills were planned for the morning of 9-11, leaving only two fighter jets available to protect the entire northeastern United States? How did Osama know that? So then who planned the drills on that morning that no fighter jets were there to intercept these planes? Think about it. Why was Attorney General Ashcroft warned to stop using commercial airlines prior to 9-11. All right, these, these are all great questions and uh, this is a great video. You're going to have to probably go to YouTube to watch the rest of this video yourself. Um, boy, I have a lot of echo in here. Anyway, our next show is on May 7th at 5 o'clock on Saturday, so be sure to watch. And in the meantime, you can... You, you're probably already watching this one on YouTube because this wasn't a regularly scheduled show. Thanks for watching. And uh, oh wow, but messed up my my CD there. But the uh, <laughs> the main thing is you can contact me at nine one one w a i j at gmail dot com with any comments or questions. Especially if you don't like the show, I'd like to hear why. If you can be concise and not abusive, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> See you next time.